Today I'm gonna teach you three new underrated music video transitions that you can create inside of After Effects for your music videos. Let's go. My name is Evan Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. Let's get straight into it. The first effect we're gonna be creating is this flash photo transition effect. I got the idea from George Bufford. If you don't know who he is, he directed the Dat Boys a Liar music video and all the Ice Spice stuff. So absolutely go to director, make sure to check him out on Instagram. Anyways, the first thing you're gonna need to create this effect is flash photos, obviously. I have some flash photos right here that I took from a photo shoot. And what you're first gonna do is just scale them up like really big. Now, by the way, this is not just a flash photo like effect, but it's also a match cut effect. If you don't know what a match cut effect is you can check out this tutorial which we also created before in the past but it's actually really simple all you do is you just find a similar object or point of reference throughout all your photos or frames and then you just line up all the rest of the cuts with that exact same object i want to line up the subject's eyes right here what we're going to do first before we do anything is select the top layer right here we're gonna hit the drop down hit the drop down on transform and change the opacity to 50 yeah 50 percent then what i'm going to do is i'm going to lock the top layer and then i'm going to basically just line up the rest of the other clips with with his eyes so you can see this next frame you can see his eyes and I'm just gonna scale it down until it is the exact like same size right around there and then I just go ahead and line up his eyes just like that and boom there you go if you turn off the visibility of the top layer and then the second layer you can see there's this like kind of cool match cut eyes locked effect maybe we can line it up just a little bit better Now what you're gonna do is you're just going to line up the rest of the clip. So I'm just gonna keep the visibility of the top layer on and then turn off the visibility of the bottom layer and boom, let's just continue the process with the rest of the clips. Sometimes you might even have to rotate some clips. You can see right here, this one's a little bit of angle. I'm gonna use the R button to access the rotation and then just rotate the photo a little bit so we get his eyes in the same position and just continue the process until you line up all of his eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this portion up. So now that we've lined up all of our subject eyes, you can see if I turn off the visibility they're all lined up. It's actually a pretty cool effect already. What I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be making a staircase like cut pattern between all these layers right here so that they all have a gap of five to six frames between each of them. By the way, I'm in a 24 frame per second sequence setting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold shift to select all the top layers and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm just going to continue the process. I'm going to speed this part up as well. So now that we play it out, we have this nice match cut effect, but now let's go ahead and apply the actual like camera flash effect and movement. So what we're gonna be doing for that is we're gonna go to our layer button when we're gonna create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to create and label this blue so I know which one is my adjustment layer. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit Command Shift D right at the, the second cut of the video, just so that our adjustment layer is 10 frames total. I might even trim it down to eight frames. So one frame down on each side, just so it's a little bit faster. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be creating this camera transition effect now i'm going to teach you two ways that you can create it one is the easy fast way and the other way is the more difficult and like longer step method so of course we're always going to teach you the easy way first because why not i'm going to be going to my effects and search for the shake it up v2 pack which you can get at our website 11percent.net yes this is a preset pack but we have a bunch of camera shakes that you literally just drag and drop onto adjustment layers and you get cool effects so right here i'm going to use this swipe up effect flash drag it onto my adjustment layer and boom look at that there we go. We got our entire effect already done. And I literally just have to select the adjustment layer, hit command D, duplicate that and repeat that for the rest of the photo transitions. And we have our flash effect done. So that's how you can do it with the shake it up V2 pack. If you want to get it, it's available at our website, 11percent.net. Uh, it has 50 plus presets, drag and drop. It works with Premiere Pro and After Effects. So if you want to check it out, link below in the description. Anyways, now I'm going to teach you the second method, which is we're going to be creating it from scratch. Now this method is going to take more time, more work, but it's actually pretty easy as well because I made all the presets. Sets, so I'll just teach you how to make them yourself if you want to save the time and money. First, we're going to search for a transform effect in our effects. Drag it to your adjustment layer. Hit a position keyframe at the very beginning. And by the way, let's just hit the drop down on the effects and transform so you can see it in our timeline. I'm going to go to the very end and then I'm going to also hit another keyframe on the position. Very, very important, by the way, before we do anything else, make sure you unclick the use composition shutter angle and turn up the shutter angle to like 200 to 360. And what that basically does, it creates camera shake. The higher the 
shutter angle is, the more camera shake you have. Now, right between the cut of the clips, this is the very important part, okay? What you're gonna do is right before it cuts to the next frame, that frame before it, we're going to just move our position, like keyframe up a crap ton until it goes like all the way to the edge of the image right there. That's why we're zooming in a lot, by the way, just so you have extra space to play with. So you see, it's gonna go like up crazy. We have a bunch of motion blur and all that cool stuff. Now, this is my fun little trick that I like to use for my camera shakes whenever I'm doing like swipes. Nobody ever really talks about this. I think it's underrated method. I'm gonna go one frame after until it, when it cuts to the next frame. And I'm just going to decrease the scale actually. So I'm just like decreasing the scale a crap ton. Let's actually just type in it like 400, let's say, maybe even lower. So what I'm basically doing is after like in between one frame, we're going from the transition from moving at the top of the image all the way to the bottom. So basically the camera shake looks like it's continuously moving up. And now if we play that out, boom, we have this camera shake transition that continuously moves up when it cuts between the frame, but it's basically the position moving from the top all the way to the bottom of the image within one frame, but you can't see it because obviously it's one frame. Now what I'm gonna do, of course, is just keyframe it and make it smooth, add some Bezier keyframes. I'm gonna right click all these keyframes, hit keyframe assistant, and let's do easy ease. Yeah, I'm actually gonna hit the graph editor and just make sure that these are also easy ease. Really smooth looking and boom. Now if we play that out, we have that nice camera shake slide effect and just swipes up and cuts to the next frame. Really cool looking and because it's so fast, you can still lock onto his like eyes right there, which are like all locked in on the same frame. So it's really cool. Lastly, I'm gonna go to my effects and transitions. I'm gonna search for a Lumetri color effect and I'm gonna apply that to our adjustment layer as well. And we're gonna hit the drop down on the Lumetri color, hit the drop down on basic correction and then hit the drop down on light. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go two frames before it cuts in between the next frame. We're gonna hit a keyframe of the exposure at zero. And then right when it cuts to the next frame, we're gonna crank up that exposure. Let's do like three. And then two frames after that, we're gonna turn the exposure back down to zero. Now we have like a cool flash effect in between our camera shake. Really cool looking, really simple to recreate as well. And now that you have that adjustment layer, all you have to do is hit command D to duplicate it and just repeat that process with all the rest of the clips on your timeline right there. And with that, that's how you can create a very simple camera shake transition effect. Here's the final effect. The next effect we're gonna be creating is this really weird trippy looking glitch synth effect. And this is like hard threshold effect. It's a really simple fast cut. And that's why it's a transition because you're not, you don't wanna apply this to your entire video. It just looks absolutely horrendous. But if you play it in a music video and then use it as a very brief transition like this, it looks really cool. Let's teach you how to create that. So this is the effect right here in the music video and let's do it for the next frame. So the first thing I did before was I actually stabilized the motion of the video clip. This is actually really simple to do. All you have to do is hit your tracker and then hit stabilize motion. And then you just basically select a point throughout the entire frame that is visible and hit the play button and apply. Very, very simple. If you don't know how to track, we also have another tutorial right here, um, which teaches you how to track. But I'm gonna skip over the tracking part so we can save some time. Anyways, let's go ahead and apply the effect now. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go to my effects and presets and we have to create everything in black and white, obviously. So we're applying Lumetri color to the layer. And then I'm just going to hit the drop down on basic correction, turn the saturation down to zero. Let's turn the exposure up a little bit and contrast up and then shadows down a bit. So we have a really harsh black and white right now looking kind of cool. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a noise just so that we can have some like film grainish texture to it. I'm going to turn up that amount to like 23 and uncheck use color noise. Very important. Now we have this really cool grainy black and white texture on our video. Kind of cool looking almost there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer by hitting command D. And by the way, I'm just editing in the music video. This is like an entire clip just pulled from the music video. So these other layers are the music video itself. I'll delete them. It's not distracting to you. Anyways, in the second duplicated layer, I'm going to go ahead and delete the noise first. And then I'm going to search for the extract effect on our effects and presets and apply that to our layer. I'm going to turn off the effects on our Lumetri color just so that we can mess around with the extract for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the black point a bunch around to like 120 ish. And then I'm going to turn down the white point to about like 130. This really depends on what video you have and like the lighting of your video because every shot is gonna of course be different. If you want the extract to be more around the edges, you can just go ahead and keep messing around with those values. But now we have like a kind of cool outline looking effect on Rilo's face right here. It's looking kind of cool, almost there. What we're gonna do next is we're going to create a new layer. We're gonna create a solid layer. Doesn't really matter what color it is. It just has to be a layer. And then what I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna go to my effects and presets and I'm gonna search for noise. And this time we're gonna apply the fractal noise to our solid layer. And basically what fractal noise does, it creates like a cool cloud looking pattern, kind of cool. But let's go ahead and turn up the contrast to like 200, brightness up definitely a lot. And then I'm gonna hit the transform and turn down the scale to around like 19-ish. And I actually might just decrease the contrast a little bit so it's a little bit more gray. Now we have this nice looking grayish pattern. You might be wondering why are we creating this? This is basically the texture for the outline layer of our effect, which we're gonna do in a bit. Now I'm going to apply an actual noise effect. This noise effect right here, I'm applying this to our adjustment layer as well. Then I'm turning that value up as well. And this time we're keeping the color grain on just so it creates this cool like colored chroma texture. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the track matte pick whip tool and I'm gonna drag and apply that to that second duplicate layer that we created and boom, there we go. Now we have this nice like crazy outline applied to our effect layer. It's kind of looking cool, almost there. Lastly, I'm gonna search for a glow effect and I'm gonna apply that to our duplicated layer of the effect and let's turn up the radius a bunch to like 20 and then you can mess around with the threshold and intensity of course. Okay, so now that we have this outline effect, let's go ahead and make it look a little bit more CRT looking and for that we are going to be using a Venetian blinds effect. Now this is just always a cool go-to when it comes to anything CRT because it creates blinds as you might know. Let's go ahead and double click that solid so we can see exactly what we're doing. I'm going to increase the Venetian blinds to like 40%. Let's turn the direction to 90 degrees so that they're horizontal. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the width to about, let's do three. So we have this really trippy looking like CRT line effect going on. Looks pretty cool. Let's go back to our main comp. You can see we have our Venetian blinds added to our outline layer. Now, if you aren't able to see your outline layer that much, that might just be because the light is just too bright on the original clip. So you can turn down the exposure a little bit if you need to. So that way the outline stands out more. One last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a tint to that duplicate layer. I almost forgot about that or else we're gonna get this really weird looking like color effect. I'm gonna change the matte black to white so that all of our layer is white. The outline layer is white and boom, there we go. Now we have this really crazy outline glow effect looking a lot better. You can mess around with the settings if you want to tweak it. Now what we're gonna do is we are basically just going to hit command D to duplicate the bottom layer one more time. Sorry, with a lot of duplication. We're going to select all these top three layers, right click them and pre-compose. We're going to hit move all attributes into a new comp. Then I'm just going to hit command shift D to trim off those edges. I'm going to go ahead and scale up this entire like video clip a little bit. And I'm just going to mess around with the blending mode and change that to something like screen. And boom, there we go. Now we have this really cool trippy glitch effect similar to the one like the music video. I believe for this original effect right here, they definitely use some sapphire and like chroma distortion to get those really cool like distort heat maps. Another cool way to recreate this effect without having to purchase sapphire or do any of the work that we basically did is I'm gonna be using Tiny Tapes as a surveillance plugin. Now this plugin works natively inside of After Effects. You just basically get it from his website, download it, install it. I'm just gonna go ahead and select the footage that I want from my pre-comp and then I go ahead and hit choose footage. Make sure that is the footage that I want. Yep, that's the music video. And then I just hit looks and boom, it does all the work for me. So you can see we already have some crazy looking like surveillance footage distorts and everything like that. But what's even cooler is that there's a bunch of different presets. So I can just go ahead and move throughout the presets. This is like a really grunge looking like black and white flicker. I believe though there is a outline. Boom, here it is. Yes, this is the outline right here. This outline looks pretty much exactly like the one in the music video. And what's cool about this is I can just go ahead, remove the camera overlay and hit done and bake it into my video. So I'm just gonna hit CRT video and boom, there we go. Now we have our baked in digital synth effect applied to our music video. It looks absolutely dope. There's a bunch more different settings that you can just mess around with the surveillance plugin. So if you wanna get it, you can check it out at tinytapes.ca, link below in the description. And here's the final second result. The last transition that we're gonna be creating today is this paper mixed media transition. We're gonna be using our brand new mixed media newspaper texture, which we just dropped on our website, 11percent.net. has 60 plus overlay files of like newspapers, paper textures, and just a bunch of crazy stuff. So if you wanna check it out, it's also linked below in the description. But you also can create this for free because we actually have free samples of all of our packs. So if you wanna get that free sample and then create the effect that we're creating right here in this video, you can totally do that as well. Everything's linked in the description, as I said. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna get this clip 
right here. I'm gonna hit Command Shift D to split the layer. And one really cool tactic that I like to use for splits and like direct cuts is moving the second layer one frame after. We're gonna create a new solid layer and hit OK. And this is just basically a blank solid white layer. I'm hitting Command Shift D to split that. So that way we have this one white flash layer. There's just one frame of white and it just really makes your cuts feel a lot more like fast paced and more music video like. So if you wanna try that, that's just a cool tip I like to do. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our effects. We're gonna search for the posterized time effect, apply that to our second layer, change the frame rate to 12 frames per second so that it slows the like frame rate down and makes it stop motion. Now we're gonna apply our mixed media effect. I'm gonna go to my mixed media file. I'm gonna go to my borders and transitions and I'm gonna be using this file right here. I believe this one is the free one linked below in the description so you can check it out. Linked in the description, free sample if you wanna use it. Everything's 4K by the way. I just drag and drop onto my video. I search for the key light effect and I'm just going to apply that to our mixed media layer, select the color picker tool and select the green and boom, there we go. Now we removed all the green. I'm gonna flip this layers just so that we can see her eyes right there and boom. Now we kind of have this crazy looking paper look effect. One other file that I like to apply to make this like look really authentic, which this file is not included in the free sample unfortunately. So if you wanna get this file, you have to get the full pack, but this is our paper texture overlay right here. I just drag and drop this paper texture overlay onto the video, change the blending mode to screen and boom. Now it looks like all of our video is like paper printout. This paper texture just makes everything feel paper and cohesive with the effect. And I really recommend adding other different assets. Our full pack comes with a bunch of different shapes and textures. So we got like circles, we got flowers, arrows, triangles, just a bunch of cool stuff and animations. So I would recommend just adding a bunch of different random animations. I would copy that key light effect and then just key out the green on those and then just mess around with it. Rearrange and readjust these layers so that they're just in like different parts of the video. And that way you have like a cool mixed media look without having to print out anything, use any X-Acto knives, markers, none of that. It's all completely digital. So if you wanna check out that mixed media pack, link below in the description. Seriously guys, I'm sorry I'm plugging this thing so hard, but I like poured my heart and soul out into creating this pack all summer. It took like three months of work of literally just blood, sweat and tears making this pack. So if you wanna check it out, 11%.net. But with that guys, here's the final transition. If you found anything useful in this video, please be sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe. Really, it means the world to me. Make sure to check out Tiny Tape Surveillance Plugin. Make sure to check out the Paper Mixed Media Pack and our Camera Shake Pack as well. If you wanna speed up your editing workflow and basically not have to do any of the work for this entire tutorial. So all those links below are in the description. If you had any questions or concerns, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. With that, I'll catch y'all on the next tutorial. Peace.